Now then, my name is Ryan Central and today we're talking about endgame Moe's, whether she's good, whether she's bad. We covered Zane early last week talking about how good he is at endgame. A lot of you really wanted me to cover Moe's, so I figured I'd do that. Spent a good amount of hours playing her and all of her builds, her class mods, all sorts of stuff that you can do with her. She does have her issues, but every Vault Hunter has them, and rightfully so. They should be weak in certain areas, but we can talk about that a little bit more. Generally answering the question, is her endgame play style something that you should invest into or is she just another boring gunner as if being a gunner is anything bad i loved roland in borderlands 1 but she certainly comes with a few disclaimers at worst she's a very good vault hunter on par with everybody else whilst bringing her own flavor into the game she's decent everywhere and whilst she has her character flaws she isn't a dicey pick by any stretch at best she's the strongest most broken vault hunter in the game currently even more so than flak in my eyes with the damage that she can do she suffers from the flak problems a little bit i'll describe what that is in this video but she feels strong in most ways that you'll want to be playing her that said she could definitely use some buffs in other areas why is she a really good pick well i think what makes her amazing is really obvious once you get into her skill trees each one of Bottomless Mags, Demolition Woman and Shield of Retribution provide three awesome and unique playstyles. Not to mention that they are very clear and it makes it very easy to build Moe's however you want, even putting points into areas that you just prefer. But you always know that you're going to have that never having to reload as Bottomless, insane explosive damage and critical hit grenades in Demolition, and just straight tankiness and overall DPS in Shield of Retribution. Each of them have their perks, their gimmicks, and it ties in nicely to make some really cool builds. I'm using all sorts of different clips in the background for Moe's. Some on Mayhem 3, some not. Isn't really too important, I just wanted some background gameplay. But I think the main thing is that you know what kind of Moe's you're seeing straight away from the gameplay without needing to deep dive into a skill trees to work out what's what. You know when you're seeing a Demolition Moe's. You know when you're seeing a Bottomless Mags Moe's. Does she have one health? you know that she's doing the Shield of Retribution stuff. The last video we did talking about Moe's, we were about level 30, just finished the campaign, and that aspect of Moe's play got even better once you get to level 50. You go down one of the skill trees, get the capstone, and then you start investing into another tree, being able to synergize between two skill trees as you get to level 50 is pretty much seamless, and you can make some really cool combinations. Combining bottomless mags with Shield of Retribution for just a lot of damage, but not many explosions. Demolition Woman, Shield of Retribution, sort of the opposite, but you still have that survivability. Or going into Bottomless Mags and Demolition Woman, which is probably the strongest, which we can talk about soon, but you lose out on survivability a little bit. Point is, is that you can make a build that hits those really impactful talents, and all of the playstyles of most that I've tried out with the different builds and class mods and stuff have all been a lot of fun. But the demolition modes that you're seeing on screen with the grenade spam and the just general explosive damage that you could do is almost too good that it's becoming a problem. And this is what I mean by the flak issue that flak's running into. Here's one very, very good build ways like building for fade away with a lot of crit damage, one shot bosses and the like. But everything else about flax play whilst it is very fun, isn't close to being as strong or as good. Therefore, it makes it difficult to build for it. And this is where we start going into the areas where Moe's is a bit of a challenge. If the gameplay on the background is what you want, if you're like, hell yeah, I want to do this sort of stuff, then play Moe's. But if you were looking for something else, this is where it starts to get a little bit iffy. But I wanted to start with a general area where she can be improved as it goes into this much bigger topic of Moe's down the line. The biggest area where Moe's sucks, in my opinion, is with her mech. Now, in the last video I did talking about Moe's, I said that the mech scales up quite well when you're leveling. This was, like I said, about level 35, and that was very much the case. The mech does scale really well up to level 50, but once you go into those mayhem modifiers, that's where stuff really starts to slow down, and the strength of the mech really diminishes. It feels like in a lot of cases, you do more damage outside of the mech than in it. Not to mention that each of the weapons only has one augment on the mech, meaning that you don't really get to provide too much utility. There's a lot of offensive stuff you can do, such as adding a singularity grenade in there, but generally it feels like there's not many options that you can realistically run. There are weapons that do corrosive damage or shock damage or fire damage, depending on what you want to do. Elemental damage can be an area where Moe's can struggle, but I've never wanted to jump into the mech at all when playing these builds, and every time I did jump into the mech, I 
instantly jumped out because I didn't mean to press that button. I think it's a huge red flag for a Borderlands character to not really want to use their ability, ever, really, because it just doesn't work as well as without the ability, you know? And this is something that Gearbox has tried to do already. You can tell by some of the class mods too in particular. One that decreases the fuel use and increases the duration, meaning that you're in there for a good amount of time before you're ejected out. You can tell that Gearbox want to make this kind of like 100% uptime mech build. But the issue with the duration is that it has diminishing returns. Simply put, you will die before the duration runs out in that mech with all of the damage that you're taking. You can add a little bit of a shield to your mech, but it does get killed fairly quickly. And because your health is armor, you can't really regenerate it in a consistent fashion. If this health was more like shield health, then I could see it being useful a lot more. But you could have like a five minute duration of the mech. It's not that long, but you will never last those five minutes if you're out and about fighting because you'll just lose your mech. You'll lose all of the HP on it and be ejected early. And then you have to wait a decent amount of time before you can use it again. But like I said, you tend to do more damage outside of the mech than in it, so why would you want to be in a mech in the first place? There is another class mod that makes the Iron Bear a bit more like a turret, like Axton and Roland. When you have the talent that enables you when you get out of the mech that it sits around for 15 seconds, you could increase this further to be more like a minute or two minutes, and it should be a playstyle that should work. I mean, especially if Moses is meant to be the gunner class like Axton and Roland, it'd be nice if the Iron Bear could work just like a turret too. Hell, even adding a talent that was like when you summon the iron bear you don't get in it it just summons as a pet for that amount of time instead meaning that you don't need to do the whole jumping in jumping out animation you could respect for it to be an extra pet then even if you're running like a big demolition build where you don't necessarily want to be in the mech yourself you can still summon it for a bit of extra damage even if it stands still like a turret i think that would be something that gearbox should do in order to get people to use the mech more even when they're not specifically specking for it it's a nice incentive to bring it out in boss battles or where there's a badass where you want that extra bit of damage it doesn't seem too strong but it might be an option that gearbox could take in the future i would like to see that and it would make this class mod a hell of a lot stronger that is the most obvious bit of kit that gearbox can improve mo's at i think it's very clear that it's under tuned so maybe they can buff it in some capacity i don't know but i feel like when it comes to mo's an even bigger more glaring issue is the thing that i mentioned about her strongest playstyle revolving around the same elements of demolition woman and bottomless max. It's a really strong, brokenly OP build, which is fun. I don't think it should be nerfed necessarily, but when other aspects of Moses' kit isn't as brokenly strong, it means that there's not really any choice. I've been looking around for build ideas from the likes of Baru, Arix Gaming, other most players that have decided to sort of make a YouTube video highlighting their stuff. And whilst they've all come from different people that do have some differences, all of the builds are generally the same. Hugging the left hand side on Demolition Woman, picking up those grenade strats. I don't think it's necessarily a good sign when there's a lot of people making their own guides for Moe's and they're all basically the same because that's the strongest playstyle by far and it's pretty obvious that that's the case. That's not a big difference to previous Borderlands games, but I feel like Gearbox really made an effort to try and make it so there wasn't just a, you have to play this build if you want to play Moe's and I feel that that's kind of what's happening. I've tried making builds based around other aspects of Moe's and even building around the Shield of Retribution tree, which is great, but none of these seem to really get close to the strength of the build that I just mentioned, the build that you're seeing on screen. This is further highlighted again by Moses' class mods, which I actually want to highlight in another video now that I have them all. Really start compare which are the best and worst because when it comes to the Blastmaster class mod that you're seeing on screen, it doesn't really come close. The longer Moses goes without reloading, the more splash damage that she deals. Now this is a really good class mod because it really does complement the playstyle that we just mentioned. It's another example of Moses being so so good, other options pale in comparison. It's definitely a suffering from success kind of vibe, but the reason why I'm highlighting this is if you don't want to play the playstyle like you've been seeing on screen, if you want to play something that isn't based around explosive damage and all of this stuff going on, then I feel that there's not really much that most can offer you right now. If you want to play something based around the mech or the Shield of Retribution tree, whilst the Shield of Retribution tree is a lot better than the mech, both aren't as good as that Demolition Woman playstyle. I can't really tell if that's because that's too strong and everything else is balanced and fine or whether the Blastmaster Demolition Woman build is fine and everything else is just undertuned. I think when it comes to this kind of phenomenon, Flak has it worse. 
But Muzz's class mods really do add to this problem where this playstyle is like S tier and everything else is like B, C, D tier. Nothing really comes close to it. And that's kind of a bummer. And it makes me appreciate Zane more, if I'm honest. Whilst he doesn't have that brokenly strong OP playstyle, whilst I do still think he is undertuned in some cases, at least you could build him in a variety of ways to get use out of him. For most, it feels a bit more like this or bust. And whilst I did enjoy playing her, it was kind of disappointed that I couldn't make a tree based around the mech work or anything like that. In regards to other elements that you need to watch out for when playing Moe's, mobility is certainly one. You are the slowest Fault Hunter, which makes areas like Proving Grounds a bit of a grind. It's not a huge issue, but something that you need to bear in mind if you wanted to invest into her more. And it's very little that you could realistically do to increase that, other than maybe getting a sliding artifact that increases your speed. Gear dependency. Out of everybody, Moe's could be the most gear dependent, needing specific bits in order to make her build work. Needing a splash damage weapon for Demolition Woman, good explosive merv grenades to keep up her infinite grenade build, a good weapon like the Butcher for bottomless mags, certain shields, certain class mods, certain artifacts. It's not like Zane where you need to min-max every bit of kit that you have to get the most out of him, or even much out of him, but you gotta be attuned to the build and playstyle that you're running. Some grenades don't really work with the infinite grenade spam build. Some weapons don't really work with X and Y, and it can be kind of frustrating to understand why that's the case in some areas, and having to taste test every single interaction. But once you start putting together the build that you want, and everything starts to come together, then you're golden, and it's a really good feeling. The next area is just accuracy, survivability, damage. I mentioned this much like I mentioned before, when you are building between two of Moses free skill trees, you will have gaps in your build no matter what. If you're not running any points into bottomless mags, you can lose out on a bit of accuracy and ammo regen, which is important. If you're not running shield of retribution, you miss out on just overall damage increase, but also a good chunk of tankiness and survivability, which can be incredibly important in the higher mayhem levels. And finally, if you're not investing into demolition, woman you just lose out on a lot of damage and a lot of grenade utility that you can provide this is kind of the case for every vault hunter and it should be the case but i still wanted to mention it just for you to be aware that she's not the be all end all she can have big weaknesses in the gameplay i do get downed a lot and die a lot from my own volition to be honest i do more damage to myself than anybody else but it's just something that you might want to bear in mind if you do want to play her more end game and finally her anointed gear that i've seen kind of sucks it's not as strong as say amara's who i think has the best anointed gear by far, thus making those elements of building her kit a little bit less fun. I think a lot of people assume that I hated Zane in my last video, and I don't want people to assume that I hate Moe's in this case. I just want to be really honest, if you want to pick her up, then it's like you definitely need to bear in mind that she is S tier in one build, and all of the other ones aren't as good. No doubt other people can make these builds better than I can around the mech and the turret farm and whatever, but when it's so easy to make a really strong Moe's build that everybody else seems to be running and nobody seems to be running anything else, I think that's a bit of an area that Gearbox can look at. Maybe buff the other elements of her kit, especially the mech, in order for people to try and use it more. We no doubt at this point most of you are at level 50 with Moz if you've been playing her. Let me know if you agree or disagree what kind of builds that you've been running. Thanks for watching, take care and see you soon.